disengaging security protocols on all doors. I hope you know what you are doing, Professor. Yes, I know what I'm doing, Fanbot. Go secure the main computer core and leave the rest to me. Acknowledge, Professor. This ship is huge. Where the hell is the bridge? The doors are opening. So, you are forcing a confrontation are you? Professor, I won't disappoint you then. Pardon the mess. We've been busy dealing with some trouble in the city recently. Yeah, you guys fight monsters, so it's understandable. Wait here. I'll be right back with the guest who wants to see you. Okay. I know he's been going off to some pretty dangerous places. And he's been with you many times to some of them. As his daughter I have a right to know what is going on. He wanted to protect you from what was happening. We've been investigating a criminal organization. One controlled by an old nemesis of the professors the executive. He was supposed to be dead. He isn't as dead as the professor had hoped. What's worse, we detected some kind of energy spike, and now I can't contact him. I even tried transporting to the ship of understanding, but Fanbot is not responding. Fanbot never fails to respond. Fanbot, two to beam directly to the bridge. Fanbot please respond. Oh my god, what's happening up there? I don't know, but whatever it is, the professor is facing it on his own. It has been too long, my old friend. That's a new look for you, executive. That name no longer has any meaning to me. I am the corporate corruptor now. Corporate corruptor is it? So, you perfected the research you started in the sea of broken dreams. No thanks to you. Yes, I completed what you interrupted. But at what cost? Look at what you've become. Yes, indeed. I have become a financial force to reckon with in the gaming world. And, yet, you are blind to the damage you are doing to the gaming industry. What damage? I'm making money hand over fist. I knew, eventually in your greed you'd make a tactical blunder. I've been giving the police just enough information to keep them one step behind you. Everything I've done was planned to irritate you, to make you move your plans ahead of schedule. Hold on, what are you getting at? It's all been a ruse, an elaborate plan to bring you here. You knew capturing this ship was my plan all along. Yes, I knew for quite some time. I knew you'd make an attempt to take the ship, eventually. So, I helped you a little in getting here. You helped me get here, preposterous. Oh, yes, I helped you get here. Because there is something about the ship of understanding you don't know. And what would that be? Not only can any question be answered here, but also denying the truth while on the ship is impossible. And, so, now you are here, and you are going to listen to me and you won't be able to deny the truth of my words. You may have changed your name, and appearance, but underneath you are still predictable as always. Curse you, Professor. Hello, Chloe. No, you can't be. I'm, Chloe. It's mommy. I was told you were dead. That was my decision. I made the professor tell you I was gone. Why? Why would you do that? Do you know how long it took me to get over you were gone? I did it to protect you. Protect me? From what? My life. The kind of life I lived. And who I was. What do you mean? What kind of life? In certain circles I'm called the social justice warrior and assassin for the big corporate power brokers of the gaming world. You're an assassin, as in you kill people. 
Not anymore. I won't be their puppet. They used you as leverage to make me do as they say. That's why I left you with the professor, because I knew he'd protect you. Give you the better life I couldn't give you. Mom, the professor is very understanding. You could have asked for his help to escape the life. I considered that, but I knew my handlers would come for us both eventually. I couldn't risk it, so when they sent me initially to assassinate the professor I instead made a deal with him. You were sent after the professor, what deal was that? That I'd make it look like I had failed my mission if he would take you in and protect you. Which he has, you've grown up to be so beautiful. Why? Why are you here to see me now? Because I am tired of being oozed, tired of not being able to be near you. And, you have a wonderful girl in your life who helped me see the light. Mina does stuff like that. Chloe, I just want you to know I'm sorry not being there for you. I honestly believe not being around was better for you, but I just can't do it anymore. I can't ask you to forgive me, I can't even forgive myself, but would you be willing to have me in your life again? If there is anything the professor taught me, it is that forgiveness can heal even the deepest wounds. Yes, I want you in my life again, Mom. Your greatest failing is not your greed, but your inability to understand that video games are a form of art. Video games produced as a commodity, created sweatshop style, are devoid of a soul. You can feel it, that spark, the energy of creativity that exists in games created by artists who have a passion for their art. It's becoming impossible to ignore, even the most ardent fanboys are now beginning to notice the soullessness of the big annual franchises. Game studios are in the business to make money. You aren't wrong, but that's just the point. If that's all you're in it for, then you're in it for the wrong reasons. Video games are like music and movies. You can't just throw a bunch of stuff together that sounds like it works together on paper, and then expect people to like it. That is why most pop music today sounds so generic and bland, and why many movies you might think should do well in the box office often fail. It is because their creators have forgotten that those things are art, and no amount of committees and focus groups can help you create art. Art comes from the heart, the soul, not from tossing from bunch of tropes into a blender and accepting what comes out to be acceptable. Oh, but you overestimate the intelligence of gamers, Professor. Why do you think those annual franchises sell so well, even though so many people rail against them? It is because they are stupid, mindless sheeple who will buy anything that belongs to their favorite brand no matter how generic it is, and they will violently defend their favorite games and platforms with religious fervor, and shower their favorite game studios with piles of cash no matter how often they get screwed. They are the perfect slaves. You describe the average fanboy fairly well, but what you don't know is that their numbers are dwindling. In fact, there really weren't that many to begin with. Oh, it seemed like there were many, but that was only because of how vocal they usually were. That's usually the same mistake the mainstream media makes about gamers. They hear the loudest group in the room, but don't bother to look, because if they did they'd see that they were also the smallest. The average gamer belongs to what is called the silent majority. But, with ever increasing numbers we're being silent no more. In our complacency we allowed the video game industry to become what it is today. We allowed companies to start making incomplete games so they could fleece us with overpriced DLC. We allowed game companies to deliver finished games that looked nothing like what we'd been shown in previews. We aren't silent anymore, and we aren't going to let companies get away with cheating and ripping us off. Those days are over. You're just entitled, making unreasonable demands. What is unreasonable about wanting a game that is actually finished and worth playing? What is unreasonable about not wanting to be charged extra for something that should have been in the game at launch? What is unreasonable about wanting games that are fun, rather than something made with a bunch of tropes thrown together because some focus group said it'll make the games sell better? What is unreasonable about expecting a game that gives you the ability to choose your path and actually gives you an ending that reflects those choices? 
I, I, there's, there's nothing unreasonable about those things. So, don't you want games that actually delivers on what a company promises? And, if for some reason they can't deliver don't you want those companies to be honest about it? Rather than imposing review embargoes until after launch day, and using NDAs to keep people quiet about the truth. Be honest with me here, wouldn't you like to have a more honest and transparent gaming industry? I, I, I mean, yes, I'd like to have that. Unless things change, as it is now, the gaming industry is headed for another crash. Gamers are not stupid, and we're not just accepting how things are anymore. We're speaking out and we're voting with our wallets. If we don't make the worst offenders change their ways, then when the dust finally settles they may not exist anymore. We would all rather not see that happen. I don't want the gaming industry to crash. Then help me spread the word. I am not saying it is wrong for game companies to make money. It is how they make the money that matters, how they treat us their fans that matters. We aren't asking for anything unreasonable or unrealistic. We want game companies that are transparent and honest. We want games that deliver upon realistic promises. And we no longer want to be nickel and dime for things that should have been in the games at launch. Those, those are completely reasonable and acceptable demands. That's right, we are not asking for the world here. We just want to be treated with respect, without all of the exploitation, and without all the lies and deceptions. Companies unwilling to give us, that don't deserve our money, and certainly don't deserve to survive. I never thought of it that way. All I could see were the profits, and the mindless loyalty of the fanboys. I was blind to the harm I was causing the gaming industry. It isn't too late, you know. We can change things, all of us, if we work together. We can become the loudest voice in the room, and if there are those who won't listen, then we let them suffer the consequences and give our support to those who do. But, that means letting some companies fail, some that have made some of the most iconic games in gaming history. True, those companies may die, but their IPs will live on. Other companies will buy up their assets, so those iconic franchises won't go away, but they will change. And it will be changed for the better. So, now that you have accepted the truth, what do you say? I will help you, I will help you make this game industry a better place for all of us. Now, was that really so bad? People of the gaming world. I'm, I was. The corporate corruptor, but no more. I've been shown the truth, the error of my ways, and it is time I made amends. From this time forward, I will no longer be the corporate corruptor. Rather, I will become a positive force for change. To bring honesty, transparency, and integrity back to the gaming industry. Henceforth, I will now be known as the gaming defender and will work with, and not against, the professor to make the video game industry better for all of us. Yes, sir, our plan failed. The professor got to him, he was our best possible asset. This means starting from square one. Very well, sir, I'll make the preparations. And what about the social justice warrior, shouldn't we retrieve that asset? You are right, she's too close to the professor now, I'll have all materials linking her to us disposed of. We were close this time, the so-called corporate corruptor just was not powerful enough. How else would you like me to proceed? Agreed. I'll go to ground until things settle down, then I will begin putting new plans into action. At least we still have some of the artifacts we were able to acquire. Very well. Thank you, sir. What a disaster. You've won for now, Professor. But your victory will be short-lived. <laughs>